We have told many stories on this channel about a developer squandering potential through updates, patches, or just general game direction. Often, these developers strike gold early and then move against the wishes of their player base. A company misunderstanding the wants of its customers is a tale as old as time, and today we would like to talk about one such instance where the developer got too caught up in the hype of everything around them. A story about a game franchise that found success early but were so out of touch with their fans that few remember them today. This is what happened to The Culling. The Culling was a battle royale multiplayer game that came out in March 2016 to Steam Early Access. It predated most of the other big names in the genre, like PUBG and Fortnite, by almost a year, and the only other major entries up until that point were the Arma 2 mod Daisy Battle Royale and H1Z1 King of the Hill. The Culling, being a standalone title and not a mod or separate game mode, is considered to be the first standalone BR game to ever be released. So why has it faded to such obscurity? We'll answer that question soon enough, but first, let's talk about the game itself. A round in The Culling hosts 16 players, either solo or in teams of two. After building your character with perks, which can make you run faster, heal quicker, or deal more damage with certain weapons, unarmed players are dropped onto a massive island. From there, you craft weapons, traps, and tools to slowly pick off other players until the last person or team is left standing. A currency, called FUNC, could be collected and used to call in supply drops with temporary buffs and stronger weapons. All of this was condensed into 20 minute rounds with an aesthetic similar to that of The Hunger Games, right down to the big screen in the sky advertising when players are killed. Being so new to the genre, there were no rules for what a BR game had to look like. It was all experimentation and trying new things, and the developers, Xaviant Games, were very good about incorporating player feedback and quickly addressing major balance issues. The graphics were decent enough for the time, and the low price tag led to huge sales numbers. After its launch in March of 2016, the game quickly found itself in the top 10 best-selling games on Steam. Now, it may be hard to picture today, with BRs being just about everywhere, but back then, a game like The Culling was fairly novel. The emphasis on melee and player skill meant that the winner of a fight wasn't automatically decided by who had the stronger weapon. Blocks and riposte let you circle strafe around your enemy and provided plenty of opportunities for outplaying, so even if you didn't find the best gear in time, you could still beat someone who had better weapons than you. The Culling also lent itself to several different playstyles. For example, it was totally possible to sneak up on someone with full body armor and stab them in the back with a stone knife. Likewise, if you were the guy with the full body armor, you could just chad your way to victory and crush everyone in your path. The dynamic playstyles and different ways you could craft weapons and tools led to an extremely diverse playing experience. The short 20 minute rounds meant that all of this was condensed into easily digestible and replayable games. Being in early access, the developers were incentivized to keep innovating and iterating. But while change can be good, you have to be smart about the way that you do it. Xaviant, unfortunately, was not all that smart about it. The game was patched frequently, like very frequently. And typically this is a good thing, but most of their patches drastically changed core gameplay elements, meaning that players could not master the game before everything switched up again. On top of this, Xaviant was a little bit too eager to implement features suggested by the players, constantly adding to the game while being unconcerned about how the gameplay experience was being affected. This created a balancing nightmare and alienated many old players who felt they were no longer playing the same game they had been interested in at the start. Unfortunately, the culling slipping into a decline couldn't have come at a worse time because the battle royale genre was a powder keg waiting to explode into something that would change the industry forever. Just over the horizon was the release of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, which, when compared to The Culling, had a bigger scope of 100 players, more money behind it, and added credibility given that Brendan Green, one of the game's designers, is considered to be the guy who invented the battle royale genre. When PUBG released in early 2017, it was the spark that triggered the powder keg, and almost overnight, every publisher was trying to release a battle royale game. Pretty quickly, PUBG siphoned away the Culling's player base, and the game, that for a while had its foot in the door, began to fade away. Now, in situations where a bigger title comes out, a drop in the player base is to be expected. But in the Culling's case, it was almost a complete wipe. 
This drop was compounded by the fact that on October 5th, 2017, Xaviant officially released the culling as a full game and left early access. For whatever reason, it was at this point that the devs decided to slow down the frequency of their updates, and the result was… dramatic. Pretty soon, the culling's player base was down to the double digits, and the game was essentially unplayable. Seeing the writing on the wall, Xaviant cut their losses and announced at the end of 2017 that development for the culling would officially come to a halt. They promised that the team would shift to working on a sequel, while leaving the original servers up for anyone still interested in the game. Six months later, in June of 2018, Xaviant unveiled what they had been working on, The Culling 2. Unfortunately, by this point, the video game landscape was different than when they made The Culling 1. In 2016, The Culling had essentially zero competition, but by mid-2018, Battle Royales were the most popular genre on the market. The rise of first PUBG, and then Epic Games' Fortnite Battle Royale, and even Apex Legends meant that there were hundreds of millions of dollars being poured into the genre, and the standard had been set. In order to compete, you had to have incredible resources behind you, or you had to offer something wholly unique. But despite skepticism from critics, game director Josh Vanveld believed that the timing was right, and the game released without an early access period. Because there was so much going against it, The Culling 2 needed to break boundaries and offer something that nobody had seen before. And what they released was not quite that. Almost immediately, it was criticized by players for feeling like an unfinished game. The main talking point was the game's visuals, which were very similar to that of PUBG. While the developers were adamant that it was an intentional artistic choice to be more in line with other Battle Royale trends, copying the biggest game on the market isn't a great way to differentiate yourself from the pack. The timing of the release was also unfortunate in more ways than one, because just two days after its release, the new Fortnite season started. On release day, player numbers sat just under 300, but within 40 hours, the player count dropped to one. Outside of the graphics and poor release timeline, the player count for matches was increased to 50 and put a bigger focus on ranged weapons, leading to many longtime fans to accuse Xaviant of selling out and take away basically everything that made the game unique in the first place. Suffice to say, the response was incredibly negative, so much so that only 8 days after release, Xaviant decided to pull the Culling 2 from storefronts, refund all purchases, and close down its servers. The developers lamented the experience and promised to come back to what the player base wanted all along, continued development on the original. The Culling, day one, reverted the Culling to a similar state that it was in in March of 2016. This included bringing back old features and introduced new graphics and optimizations. And while the idea was sound on paper and received moderate support from the player base, it was a little bit too late. The rise of Fortnite and PUBG blew every other BR out of the water, and nearly every AAA publisher at this point was developing their own battle royale. There was just no way the small 20-person development team could keep up. Just under a year later, in March 2019, Xaviant announced that the revenue from the rebooted version of the game was not enough to sustain development and server expenses, and planned to close down the servers in May 2019. Following this, in March, the game was made unavailable for purchase on Steam. So while the PC franchise did end in a spectacularly disappointing way, there is one more stop on this train ride to obscurity. The Culling Origins. May 12th, 2020. Xaviant would come out of the woodwork to announce that an Xbox One standalone title would be released for the franchise. This announcement would make the rounds in gaming media, but perhaps not for the reasons the devs wanted it to. All the media surrounding this release would cover only one thing, the monetization system. Not only would the title come with a $6 price tag, but matches would be on a pay-per-match system, wherein after playing your first free match of the day, you would have to buy a token to play another. Sure, you were given 25 of these tokens upon purchasing the game, and you would get a free token for winning a match, but forcing people to pay to play more than one game is just a really bad idea. Obviously, critics tore this system to shreds, causing the developers to almost immediately backtrack on it and allow players 10 free matches a day. Xaviant tried to defend themselves by saying that the pay-per-match system was a way to mitigate server strain and cost, but once again, this mismanagement damaged the game's reputation and turned people off the title completely. Today, The Culling Origins remains a fringe title on the Xbox One, and while there were alleged plans to bring the game to PC, there has been no movement on that front. 
The Culling started its life as the first standalone battle royale game on the market, and ended up in almost complete obscurity. It's a tragic story, and proof that being first isn't everything. But despite its problems and its ultimate failure, The Culling set the stage for future games to follow its example and build upon it, and its successes and failures have influenced the way that BR games are made today. The game took risks, it tried new things, and it built its game around what the community wanted. While it may have died in the end, The Culling deserves to be remembered for what it meant in the early days of the BR genre, and the role it played in shaping the games we love today. Thanks for watching. Do you remember when The Culling was huge on Twitch and pretty much everyone was playing it? What was your first experience with a BR game? Do you want to see more Battle Royale games that have a focus on melee weapons? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason, Foxy, Lyra, Mauve, Nate, Nathan, Sierra, Shampoo, Weeboo, and Spartacus for being Platinum supporters, as well as an extra special shout out to Mookie, Noodles, Marco, and Steven for being Diamond supporters. Thanks for all the support. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below, or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.